What if I told you your entire grocery aisle could fit inside this tiny egg-shaped mini farm, powered by light, microbes, and pure strategy? These aren't normal seeds. Each one was engineered to sprout food faster than any plant on Earth, under perfect micro-environmental control. A single bead can hydrate the entire ecosystem for 72 hours. That's no mistake, it's precision-engineered moisture regulation. Inside the soil, billions of helpful microbes manage nutrients, break down waste, and feed the roots. Within just 24 hours, the first roots appeared, pushing through the substrate with a determination that felt alive. Our oxygen cycle doesn't use pumps or fans. It's driven by plant respiration and carefully timed water circulation. This smart mesh captures CO2, storing it until the plants need it again, just like a mini forest does every day. Heat management might sound boring until you realize this layer self-regulates temperature without a single moving part. These LEDs switch spectra based on plant needs. Simulate sunrise. By day three, the sprouts doubled in height. And that's when I realized this thing might actually work long term. Even evaporation is recycled back into the soil. This microclimate wastes zero water, something even farms can't do. A hidden layer of fungi breaks down droppings and dead leaves. It's the silent recycler of this tiny world. Instead of bees, I programmed a pollination drone. Don't worry, it's harmless, unless it develops free will. This nutrient solution contains every essential mineral, and it reacts in real time to the farm's growth stage. These algae aren't just for oxygen, they can be harvested for protein and biofuel. Yes, from something the size of your thumb. The moment I saw a wilted plant revive itself, I knew this system behaved more like life than code. Smart sensors track light, moisture, oxygen, and growth speed, then adjust everything automatically. It's a farm that farms itself. All excess waste falls into this lower tray, decomposing safely with the help of beneficial microbes and heat. But then I noticed calcium buildup on the shell. If left untreated, it could clog the nutrient loops. To save the system, I gently clean the deposits through this port. One wrong move, and the entire micro farm could collapse. Day seven, the first shoots unfurled, delicate but laced with enough toxin to wipe out a small bird. Under magnification, its pollen looked like alien spores, floating waiting for the right moment to infect. The roots were penetrating deeper than expected, lifting the gravel layer like something alive beneath. To control its growth, I built a drip system, just 20 microliters at a time, or it could overgrow overnight. One leaf mutated, split into five connected lobes, a sign it was becoming unpredictable. To prevent airborne toxins, I added airflow control, one mistake could turn my room into a biohazard. Spores were now kept in a sealed jar below. One breath of this could trigger paralysis in small mammals. By day 10, the growth curve was exponential. A botanical disaster if left unchecked. Thermal scans revealed active metabolism at night. Primu, the plant never really sleeps. From now on, I'd work in full protection. It felt ridiculous, Lan, yet not enough. The lighting shifted into growth spectrum phase. Blue for photosynthesis, red for accelerated toxin production. Condensation built up along the glass, and the system was stable, but tension was rising. At night, the roots glowed faintly hully, its toxins reacting with the nutrient salts. Each leaf now carried two milligrams of toxin, enough to severely affect a human if ingested. Under the microscope, crystal-like toxin clusters formed, a morning, beautiful and deadly. I added warning labels, mainly to remind myself what I was dealing with. The growth chamber was sealed, but the pressure inside was building, literally. I had to inject inhibitors directly into the soil to keep the plant from outgrowing its space. The night footage shocked me. Subtle movements like it was responding to something unseen. 
On day Fortin, the air purifier went critical. I wasn't prepared for what came next. The larvae doubled overnight, each segment expanding as if powered by invisible fuel, revealing something unexpected. One larva grew sharp mandibles, turning predator. The transformation Bioluminescent signals pulsed through their bodies, like primitive neural networks firing in sequence. I had no choice but to activate the containment field. If even one escapes at this size and speed, the entire house becomes a habitat. Their movement patterns synchronized, forming spirals and waves. This isn't random growth. This is coordinated. I developed a nutrient matrix to control growth rates, but they consumed it in minutes. Their metabolism is rewriting basic biological limits. Tiny eyes appeared, strands of pigment pooling into optics. They're not just reacting anymore, they're perceiving. A tiny stress fracture in the side panel, and they flooded outward. I had seconds to seal it, otherwise this room becomes their world. Using a nano mesh repair bot, I patched the breach. But the larva paused to watch, as if understanding the technology that saved them. One by one, they began to molt, leaving behind transparent shells that look like ghost versions of themselves. I noticed a rhythmic pulse beneath their skin, as if a shared heartbeat was emerging. Their immune systems appear hyper-evolved, targeting foreign bacteria within seconds. Even humans don't react that quickly. A chemical signal drifted in the air, a pheromone release that triggered immediate behavior shifts. It spread like invisible wildfire. Then it happened. The Alpha emerged, significantly larger than the other. Every other lava circled it, forming concentric rings. Is this leadership or something more dangerous? I activated an emergency stasis field to control the population. If the Alpha evolves further, containment might be impossible. Their metabolism spiked beyond sustainability. Some began collapsing, seemingly giving their stored energy to support the Alpha. The Alpha's skin hardened, segments sharpening into armor, as if preparing different form. Subgroups began splitting and spreading like wildfire, each division faster and more chaotic than the last. The Alpha towered over the others, its mass doubling in hours, feeding faster than I could comprehend. They swarmed the nutrient block, shredding it apart in seconds, their hunger louder than the tank's walls. A shimmering membrane formed around its body, reflecting every flicker of artificial light like a living crystal. Sudden bubbles burst toward the surface, oxygen levels spiking beyond anything the system was designed to handle. The walls of the tank began to bow, the pressure building so fast I thought it might explode. Then limbs began forming at random, the first undeniable proof they were evolving right before my eyes. A neural network lit up beneath the skin, pulses firing like signals, an entire brain activating. Then everything moved at once, thousands of bodies shifting as if obeying a single invisible command. A breach formed in the corner. I rushed in and applied emergency sealant praying the foam would hold back the surging pressure. The apex form stood above the colony, taller, stronger, and evolving faster than anything I'd recorded before. But the others refused to submit. They swarmed the apex, attacking in a frenzy of survival. Suddenly, a spherical membrane expanded, like a biological shield that blocked every attack. A pulse erupted from the shield, knocking every creature flat, like the tank had just taken a breath. And then, nothing. Total silence. Every creature frozen, as if time itself had stopped. The system rebooted automatically, recalibrating for metabolic activity it was never designed to support. The first twitch came from the apex, then another. 
A ripple of movement signaled the beginning of something new. They turned as one, every eye, every limb, looking directly at the glass, as if they finally understood I was watching. The first lava is pushing through its shell, and what emerges is bigger than expected. Several more hatch at once, forming a pulsing cluster of life that moves like a single organism. This tray contains powdered algae, dense in protein, designed to trigger a growth spike within 24 hours. They feed like they'll never eaten before, absorbing nutrients faster than anything I've ever raised. In just three days, each has doubled in size, and the tankle's population is climbing past control levels. Temperature spikes are beginning. Too high and they'll collapse, too low and growth could stop completely. They're stacking on top of each other, blocking light, fighting for oxygen. This is no longer sustainable. I install a micro-aeration pump to stabilize oxygen levels before the colony suffocates itself. With fresh air, the entire colony shifts color, signaling they've entered a high-growth metabolic state. I introduce a controlled algae flood, simulating seasonal abundance to see just how far they will go. One larva has outgrown the rest, at least three times larger. This was not supposed to happen. At night, the largest organism moves differently, almost as if it's aware of its surroundings. Today marks day 19, and every readout suggests their growth curve is accelerating, not slowing. I isolate the largest individual to analyze its tissue. Cell structure is unlike any documented organism of its size. The sequencing results are chaotic. Whatever they're becoming, the, the transformation is more than just physical. They've shifted behavior, not competing, but organizing, like a collective, synchronized mind. In 24 hours, they've nearly outgrown the tank. This environment is now too small, and so is the plan. I have one choice, to release them into a controlled secondary habitat or risk total collapse. The new habitat is ready. Double the space, triple the structure. It's their only chance. From a single drop to an entire ecosystem, this journey wasn't just about growth, but survival. It's day 40, and I'm staring at one of the fastest growing creatures ever recorded. Their little world is sealed now, a self-contained realm that will continue with or without me. I never imagined raising them would challenge every expectation I had about life in captivity. If you enjoyed this experiment, please like and subscribe. The next project is already growing.